Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to make a weed eater blade to cut grass out of the lid of a one gallon bucket of ice cream. This is the type I'm using and notice the type of plastic is real flex, has some flexible just to it so I didn't want something really hard. Uh, the blade lasts about a couple of uses uh, depending on the type of lawn you have. I have like St. Augustine grass, it's very thick. This does cut through that grass and will last you quite a while depending on the thickness of your grass and if you're hitting sticks. And it's not designed to hit sticks and rocks. It will happen, but it does last through all of that. Okay, first step is to drill the hole in the center. So I'm starting off with drill bit 3 30 seconds. And here you can just see in here where the center of this top is. So I usually use that instead of the drawing because it's pretty dead on. Just feel around there if you can't see it, but you'll see a little divot there. And I start there and just kind of drill bit in. Do that, you can use a uh, drill if you want to, but I just use the bit to get through it. Okay, so I made the first hole and I'm gonna go in with the larger drill bit until I get up to the size of the particular uh, screw that I'm using. Okay, next I'll trim off any excess burrs with the razor blade. So once you print out the pattern, you're going to lay it over and start cutting. So some of you may be more experienced at this, but if you're not, just as a quick tip, I went ahead and just poked a hole through the pattern and then laid that pattern through the hole on my plastic lid just so that I know that I'm lined up with the actual center before I start cutting. So once I get everything lined up and this thing is standing all the way through, then I'm going to take the pattern. So once you've cut these out, when you make a replacement blade, just take the old one and lower it over the new blade, the new top, and to just cut out the edges. You don't have to go through all this if you don't want to. It's just the first one getting the pattern down. After that, it's pretty easy. Okay, there it goes. I've cut my blades out using my shears, and I can go ahead and take the pattern off because now it is done. And I made them my blades somewhat thick because it's going to go through a, a lot of abuse out there. And so I didn't want to make them too thin that they fall off uh, and they still have some rigidity. I'm using a flexible plastic again because I didn't want shards of plastic or metal flying off because it still spins pretty fast. And so I uh, still wear my long pants and boots. Okay, so here you can, in the shop here, you can see the cap to the electric weed eater. I have not tried it on the gas. The electric moves just fast enough. I don't want it moving too fast. See, this is made of ABS plastic. So if you have a 3D printer, you might be able to print another type. But I didn't want it moving really fast because it's not really needed. And I made these two washers here out of some sheet metal because I wanted to just the the blade to slip just a little if I hit something hard um, because this wasn't really designed to handle uh, a lot of lateral forces on it so I wanted the blade to just slip just a little bit but still be able to have enough um, tension there to cut the thick glass uh, thick grass that we have here in Texas so I'll show you how I, this works when I take it apart. But these are pieces. Nut. Lock washer. Regular washer. You see the sizes there. And just for your reference there, you can see how big the washer I made is. and a half. 
So now what I'm showing here is the order of assembly. The base is a small washer, then the cut washer, the blade, the second washer, and these two are compressing down on this. This is what really holds it down. Then you have another washer, a lock washer, and then the nut. So I put the first washer on. I put this on here. That's the first layer of compression. Blades are facing upward on the uh, when you get on the weed eater. So make sure you're facing the right direction. Sorry to pause the video to line it up. I'm doing this with one hand. So just make sure you're flat all the way down. I'm gonna use my fingernail to make sure it's the plastic's all the way down. Now put the second part on. And now that's the compressive fitting. That's what compresses it down. And use this washer to hold it in place. And just make sure your washers are all flat. You'll install your lock nut. And then last is the final nut that secures it. So I'm gonna tighten these down and I'll restart the video. Okay, so I secured it on there. I went ahead and flipped this because over time it's warped. So uh, I wanted to make sure that that end is really compressing down and holding this steady. It's not the small screw that's holding it down. It's it's the friction of this washer that's really holding it together, sort of to sliding. But I just wanted just enough so it can slip if I hit a twig or something. It would just make a small slip because like I said, these weren't designed to hold these kind of forces, these, these caps, but it does still work. And I'm just gonna tighten it up just a little bit so I can just get a little bit of slip in there and we'll start cutting grass. It's ready to go. Okay, so here we are. Here's my Black & Decker electric uh, weed eater. And battery is not installed, just to make sure safety reasons. Wearing goggles. So anything time you're experimenting with stuff, it's always good to be safe. And so now I'm just gonna install it. I'm just gonna snap it back in place. And there it goes. So I made sure that my blade is whatever top you use small enough so it won't hit your um, your weed eater. And then I'm gonna install the battery. All right, I keep it on one. You don't need to go any faster than that. And here it goes. Runs to make sure it's on there. That's funny, it looks a lot slower on the camera than it does in real life. Make sure everything's secure, and now we're ready to cut. So, for those of you who haven't seen, this is the type of grass we have here in Houston. You see the regular blades of grass, but this is St. Augustine, and it's real thick. So, we're almost dealing with a tenth of an inch, and that's all along our grass. That's how this grass grows. So it's a little different than the Kentucky bluegrass and other areas like that, real thick. <laughs> Maybe I should get behind it.
the hard stuff so far and the blade still looks okay you'll start seeing it start to wear down after a while because I have really haven't cut my grass in a long time here so but it's still holding up we'll keep going Now it's starting to become more like a blade so I can get down a little bit closer so I told you it starts to change the way it works after a while you see this this little edge is gone this one's still here so it's gonna sound louder but this blade will start cutting down to the uh, closer stuff we'll keep going but you'll see it start to wear itself down <laughs> 